system. That's how your body is properly or improperly managing the circumstances and the life challenges that you have to deal with on a daily basis. And I'm going to help guide you through some natural, practical ways to bust the stress this holiday season so that instead of just trying to survive it this year, <laughs> you can actually thrive through it. And uh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to wake up on January 1st and not be 15 or 20 pounds heavier uh, recent research has shown that the average American gains 14 pounds through the holidays. So some a little more, some a little less. Let's make sure we're on the lesser side of that. Heck, why not even lose some weight through the holidays if you can? We're going to give you some practical strategies and how to manage this holiday season and try and keep your stress on, uh, on a minimum level. So again, welcome Thanks for joining us. Those of you that are just tuning in, I'm Dr. Matthew Fromm here with Max Health Chiropractic presenting your holiday stress buster. So let's get into it. Uh, who are we? Well, you've probably heard the radio show. If you haven't, make sure you tune in uh, every Sunday on WISN 1130 uh, AM radio, uh, 11 to noon. And you can tune in and listen to our, Ma our Max Health radio show. Uh, that also plays on uh, Thursdays at 2.30 p.m. on Joy 1340 um, we've been featured in multiple public publications, including um, Milwaukee Magazine. You could see the Face of Healthcare uh, promotion uh, article that they did for us there. And of course, if you'd like more information on who we are, uh, those of you that are guests or just joining us, I'm sure we're going to have uh, plenty of people on this webinar tonight, which is uh, just amazing. I mean, this is great technology. You can uh, get this information in the comfort of your own home. So that was part of the strategy here. We were trying to make this mo uh, you know, this uh, less stressful than actually driving and showing up to a workshop and doing all of that. So uh, hopefully that was the case. I know sometimes technology can be a little stressful too, but uh, hopefully you got logged on, you've joined us. If not, we will have the replays in the future. So uh, don't stress about that. We'll make sure that you get taken care of. But if you'd like more information about our offices and the services that we offer, we do serve uh, three Greater Milwaukee locations now. Brookfield, Hales Corners, and Waukesha. So uh, if you're looking for a doctor that uh, provides natural health care that gets to the cause and helps you get well, visit maxhealthcaro.com for more information uh, about our offices, and we can certainly help you be able to do that. So, uh, okay, let's get into it. What causes stress? This is the fundamental question that we have to answer. And again, we don't want to just treat the symptoms, we want to actually get to the cause because just managing or treating the symptoms is only going to give a short-term result. And for those of you that have uh, been around uh, Max Health Chiropractic and our doctors and our team for, for, for any period of time, you know that our job is to get to the cause. That's what differentiates us from traditional healthcare approaches. Whereas you may get run through the medical merry-go-round and bounce around from doctor to doctor to doctor and drug after drug after drug, um, those are all symptomatic approaches that are going to leave you desiring more results. And uh, that's what we're here to help you get is results. And we want to help you get to the bottom of what causes stress. And the way that we get results is by getting to the cause. So the ultimate cause and, and what you need to understand in this general adaptation syndrome and the way that your body adapts to stress, it really comes down to controlling the cortisol. Say that with me, control the cortisol. Okay, I think I heard your feedback there, so great. Uh, good job. If you didn't, then I, uh, I hope you will participate throughout this so that you're not falling asleep in front of your computer. Um, let's make sure that you're going to get the best strategies here. So how do we control the cortisol? Um, well, let's get into what happens when you have cortisol dysfunction first so you can see how extensive this issue is. When your body is not properly managing cortisol, it cannot manage stress that has a multitude of different symptomatic and various health issues that occur in the body as a result of that. And so if you look at the little diagram here, you can see that affects multiple areas throughout the entire body. And um, that's not good, right? When our body is stressed, when we're overwhelmed, when we're anxious, um, you know, that can lead to all kinds of different symptoms. And some of the most common ones are listed over here on the right-hand side of your screen. Low energy. Brain fog. So that's when you walk into a room and you knew you were going to do something or grab something or you wanted to say something to someone and you walk into the room and you're, you forgot. You can't remember. 
you're just trying to recall that. And every single one of us has been in that position. It happens on occasion to all of us. But if that is a frequent issue, that's what brain fog is. Uh, dark eye circles, so those er circles under your eyes, the baggy eyes, dark circles, um, that shows us that you're not sleeping well. Um, that also shows us that your, your melatonin levels are probably off. Um, which then will um, disrupt your sleep patterns and, and cause cortisol issues. So, you know, it's a combination effect there, but that's a dead ringer for a cortisol dysfunction. Depression, uh, so mood issues, accelerated aging process, yes. Um, this is the fountain of youth. Control the cortisol, control the stress response, um, and, and it is a response, right? It's not a circumstance. It's not a person. It's how we respond to those things and our ability to adapt. So we're going to get into that here in a little bit more. It does cause an accelerated aging process. So for those of you that uh, would like to be around and have great quality of life as you age, you got to control the cortisol. Uh, it does affect the sex drive. So lower sex drive, lower libido, thinning of the hair slows down the metabolism so of course that's where the weight control issues come in so if you want to make it through the holiday season without gaining weight again you got to control the cortisol uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed of course that's our stress right there and then hypoglycemia you're getting these massive energy swings because you eat the sugar your body absorbs the sugar because you you get sugar cravings because cortisol is out of whack it's not uh, balanced properly in the body and so you get those cravings for the sugar the salts the starches uh, even the fats as well and so uh, you know you start craving all these unhealthy foods and you get these uncontrollable urges to consume them that can be a cortisol dysfunction that certainly isn't going to help us thrive through this stressful holiday season so let's get into how this all works, right? So it's uh, primarily a result of the endocrine system. Endocrine system is your hormone system. That's what controls cortisol, because cortisol is a hormone, and that's primarily controlled by the hypothalamus. So if you look at the brain sitting right there in the center of the screen, you'll see that little bluish gray area is the hypothalamus. That's the primary regulator and controller of our hormonal systems. And then if you look at the little purple kidneys there about midway through the body, you'll see the adrenal glands sitting on top of the kidneys. The adrenal glands are directly responsible for the majority of our cortisol production. So uh, between the hypothalamus and the adrenal glands, those are our two primary organ systems that we're gonna be talking about tonight in controlling and properly regulating cortisol production. Of course, that leads to better management and better adaptation through the stress. So just so you know what we're talking about here, I wanted the little diagram to help you realize that. So again, you see the adrenal glands sitting on top of the kidneys there in the diagram. These are our stress handling glands. And you can see that the adrenals produce multiple hormones, but the one that we're really going to be paying attention tonight is the cortisol. So six steps to controlling the cortisol. Number one, we want to remove the aggravators. What's causing the cortisol imbalance? Again, getting to the cause. Quit managing symptoms. Let's get to the cause. We're going to talk about the food that will fuel your adrenal glands, that will fuel proper cortisol balance, essential oils that can help with relaxation and help with cortisol balance as well, supplements, herbs, and the lifestyle habits. So just so you have an outline of what we're going to be getting into, very practical strategies for how to control the cortisol here throughout the holiday season. So let's get right into it. Step one, remove the aggravators. What aggravates the cortisol levels? Well, um, it's, it's going to be very similar to the things that trigger the inflammatory response inside of your body because what happens is that when we consume these sugary foods or our high carbohydrate foods or toxins that produces an inflammatory response and in return that inflammatory response causes insulin secretion so we're talking about a couple other hormones here but insulin secretion is a direct player in cortisol regulation and so that's very important to understand um so we really want to control it, 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 you know, you just reverse engineer that, right? So how do we get better cortisol balance? Well, you reverse engineer it through the insulin. You control insulin better. How do you control insulin better? You control inflammation. How do you control inflammation better? 
remove the carbohydrates, remove the damaging fats, and remove the toxins. Okay, so that's where we're at here. So what what causes uh, inflammation? Those refined processed grains, right? Look at the all bran up in the corner. Goodness of simple grain. That's what it says right there at the top of the box there. Uh, this is very pro-inflammatory. Okay, so um, this is uh, the reason I put this up there is because you know most people would consider all bran healthy. You know, and uh, um, it's certainly not. I mean, this is basically like consuming sugar. As soon as your saliva breaks it down, the rest of your body will see this as simple sugars, and uh, uh, it does cause an inflammatory spike, which again then is going to cause the insulin spike, which will cause cortisol imbalances, so, and then lead to stress. So again, uh, <clears throat> remove the grains, so that's an example there. Sugar, look at those cupcakes in the bottom, right? And that's not the only source of sugar, obviously, but think about it, the soda that's consumed, the cookies, the, the cupcakes, the brownies, the cakes, the desserts, the this holiday season is just perpetual for those things. The the influx of sugar is going to lead to that cortisol response again. Conventional dairy, you can see in the background there, we got a nice stream of milk splashing in the glass. It looks so beautiful, right? Uh, we love a glass of milk right now, uh, and 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 that's fine if you're getting organic raw dairy. Um, this conventional dairy is loaded with hormones, loaded with antibiotics, and again. Um, those toxic combination, that's the toxic one-two punch there that's going to lead to inflammatory and cortisol Im imbalances. Um, caffeine, also another trigger, right? You're stressing the adrenal glands directly with overconsumption of caffeine and really um, no more than 100 milligrams per day. You could do up to that and, and your body will regulate it pretty well and it won't really affect the cortisol levels uh, too much. So that's about uh, one, one to two cups of coffee depending on how strong you're brewing it. Um, maybe three glasses of tea, again, depending on how strong you're brewing it. Um, so, you know, about that 100 milligram range, you could probably look that up uh, Google-wise to see uh, how, about how much caffeine you're getting based on um, your strength of your your brew, of your coffee, or how many cups that you're doing, and, and kind of regulate it that way. But, um, yeah, so it's not that you have to cut it out completely, but uh, try and, and, and uh, limit that to 100 milligrams there. And then our antibiotics and our hormones, right? Antibiotics and hormones found in the meats, and that's uh, most commonly, so conventional meats, especially red meats because of the way that they're ranched and farmed. Um, cows are, are trapped up in the pens. They're uh, injected with uh, bovine growth hormone. Um, they are given antibiotics because the hormones and the growth – the rapid growth that they're put under is going to make them sick, and so they put them on antibiotics to prevent the sickness. Go figure, right? So they're just going to pump them with a stream full of synthetic drugs. Well, guess where those hormones and antibiotics end up? They end up in the tissue. They end up in the meat that we then consume, and they end up in us, and again, causes this cortisol imbalance. So remove the aggravators to help get to the cause. Step number two, fuel with the proper food, so things that support proper inflam inflammation because there is a certain level of inflammation that's healthy and so these foods promote healthy levels of inflammation they will also then promote healthy levels of insulin because insulin is needed to bring glucose into the cell for atp and energy production and then also to make sure that your cortisol or levels are managed correctly and that they're they're balanced and then this is going to allow your body to physio physiologically adapt to the stress response. So um, what do I mean by fuel with food? Well, coconut, I love everything coconut, coconut milk, coconut flakes, coconut uh, powder, coconut, uh, by, by that I mean uh, coconut, coconut flour, um, you know, just great. Coconut oil is amazing to cook with. It's, uh, it's a great uh, anti-inflammatory, so it's going to give you healthy levels of inflammation, supports proper cortisol secretion. MCT oil would be another version of that because your body can quickly co convert it into ketone bodies, which are a rapid source of fuel. Um, so it's an energy booster, which will help you uh, deal with the stresses throughout the day as well. Organic meat, for the very reasons that I just uh, went through in step one, um, because conventional meats have the toxins and the chemicals. So we want to go with organic meat that's going to have the natural balance of omegas, that four to one ratio or one to one ratio, depending on how healthy that meat is. You want grass-fed uh, red meats, grass-fed and grass-finished. We want free-range chicken. We want wild-caught fish like you see there, that wild salmon, that sockeye salmon, right? Vegetables, beautiful vegetables sitting in the basket down there. 
um, you know, our healthy fats like avocados and olive oil, and we mentioned coconut oil already, um, figs and berries. Um, again, this helps to promote the, the uh, proper inflammatory response and cortisol response. And if you think about it, um, you know, a lot of people will consume foods that look like the organ system. So for example, if you wanted to promote kidney health, consuming like kidney beans, right? Um, and figs, you look at the shape of a fig and it looks almost like the adrenal gland sitting right there on top of the kidney. And sure enough, what science and research has shown is that figs are actually very healthy for the adrenal glands and they help to restore adrenals and they help to keep cortisol in balance. So, um, you know, just a little tip there. And then flax and chia, again, healthy fats within the flax and the chia that will promote healthy inflammatory responses and help regulate and control that cortisol. And then of course, if you're having any GI disturbances, that can be pro-inflammatory and trigger this insulin and cortisol pathway as well. Um, so the bone broth is, is an amazing GI health restore, helps to heal the gut, and helps to balance out the hormones and uh, specifically cortisol is going to be a part of that. And of course, down here in the left-hand corner, you know, uh, these, the advanced plan in our nutrition guide. So if you don't have a nutrition guide, you could pick that up in one of the offices or order it directly online through our website. Um, but pick up a nutrition plan. There's all kinds of great recipes, but it explains this anti-inflammatory plan. It's called the advanced nutrition plan, and that can be extremely helpful and beneficial and making sure that you're uh, eating the right foods and, and uh, you have the right meal plan and recipes to help you be able to be truly well here and get the hormones balanced back out. Okay, moving on to step number three, essential oils. My top two essential oils for uh, controlling the cortisol and the stress levels are, is going to be by far rosemary and holy basil. Okay, these have been specifically researched to actually show that they help to balance adrenal gland function. So whether you have too high cortisol secretion or too low cortisol secretion, remember it's about balance. Too much cortisol, no good. Too little cortisol, no good. You want just the right amount. Well, both rosemary and holy basil help to bring the cortisol back into balance regardless of if it's gone too high or too low. Um, so you can apply these topically. You can also consume them orally. Um, that's what's great about most essential oils is that um, you can use them in multiple different formats. So you could throw a couple drops of essential oil into your tea. You could rub it directly onto your abdomen or right over the adrenal gland so it could get absorbed through the skin and, uh, and, and uh, get right to those adrenals to help calm them down. And then these other ones are general relaxation. So geranium, lavender, or chamomile myrrh. These are going to help you relax at night. We're going to talk here in a second about a healing bath. You could throw um, some of these other essential oils into the bath water, soak them up through the bath water, but then also um, to, uh, to take them in through your lungs and breathe these oils in is also very relaxing. You could put them in through a diffuser. So just a couple different ideas of how to use these essential oils to calm the adrenal glands, to control and balance the cortisol levels again, and for ultimately for stress reduction. And so again, practical step, you could throw one of these little bottles of essential oils um, in your purse or keep it in the car. And um, you know, when you're, you're feeling that extra level of stress, you could just open up the lid, breathe the oil in you know, through your nose and uh, start to feel the stress relief and, and get those cortisol levels balanced back out again. So uh, another great step, essential oils. Step four, uh, different supplements that we can recommend that will also, so this is more of the long-term play, long-term strategy uh, for helping to balance out those cortisol levels. Uh, I love the reishi mushroom. I like to consume it as a tea um, and the cordyceps mushroom extract, same thing, you know, uh, kind of pouring that in and mixing that in into either my smoothie or into a tea. Um, and you also need your B vitamins. So B complex is going to be extremely important for energy production systems, for making sure that all the hormonal systems are functioning correctly. And so you got to have a B complex. I prefer the delayed response one, uh, delayed release that we have here in the offices. The one, the reason that we carry that uh, is because uh, you won't get the niacin flush with that, which could be really uncomfortable. So uh, feel free to, uh, you know, to get some of that. If, if your energy production, you know, remember one of the symptoms of uh, cortisol dysfunction is low energy, fatigue. 
And so uh, B, B complex can be you know, one of the uh, very helpful supplements that you can be taking to help with energy levels as well. Uh, and, and then again, uh, there's a GI factor here. So to get pro probiotics in uh, is going to be extremely helpful in balancing out the gut that has shown a direct relationship and rebalancing cortisol levels as well. So some uh, very practical tips here to uh, get some supplements going that can help. Uh, further supplemental support, but specifically in the herbal remedy category, um, some really great opportunities here to balance out the cortisol levels. Um, number one, rhodiola. Rhodiola and ashwagandha are both adaptogens. What is adaptogen? What does that mean? An adaptogen actually helps your body adapt to stress. That's exactly what it means. So it helps to calm the adrenal glands. It helps to bring those cortisol levels back into balance again. And uh, cool thing is we have a couple different products that uh, have those combination of those adaptogens in them. You will find the rhodiola in the adrenal energy. So again, this specific, and that's why we have it. That's why it's in the adrenal energy supplement um, because rhodiola is an extremely powerful adaptogenic herb to helping balance out those cortisol levels and reduce the stress calm the adrenal, um, you know, get the adrenal gland function back to where it needs to be. So if those adrenal glands are overstressed to boost them with a little bit of energy, get that adrenal function going again. Ashwagandha is found in the max fit. So you can see there uh, in the fine print, it supports stress management and cortisol regulation. Um, ashwagandha is the specific herb within this product that helps us to manage proper cortisol levels. Tulsi, again, Tulsi tea, here's another tea that you can add in. Uh, do a cup or two of Tulsi tea throughout the day. Um, can really help to balance out those adrenal glands again and give you proper cortisol function along with licorice root extract. So you can see that's a liquid uh, form that you can get there. You squeeze that right into the tea or uh, into your glass of water that you're taking with the supplements for additional support in calming the adrenal glands. And then we have our Moore's product. This is our methylation donor. It specifically has astragalus in it. And again, that's another herbal remedy that specifically is designed to help with cortisol secretion, help to maintain proper cortisol balance. So a lot of great herbal remedies here. Um, I don't want you to get overwhelmed with all the information. By no means would I expect anyone to do every single one of the protocols that I'm recommending here. Um, what I would recommend is for you to pick one or two of each of the steps um, that we've gone through, you know, except for the remove step. The remove step, if we go back to that, you want to be doing, you want to remove all of this stuff. You know, we don't want to keep aggravating the adrenal glands, right? But then pick one or two things here of good fuel foods that you can do to help support your adrenal glands. Pick your one favorite essential oil here that can help. Maybe one that directly deals with the uh, cortisol levels like the rosemary or the holy basil. And then pick one of the other three as your relaxation oil. Um, pick one or two, depending on what your needs are. If it's an energy issue, Pick the B complex if you know you're having a gut issue. Probiotic if you if you're you know sure that it's just that your adrenal glands are so burnt out and fatigued because you've just been dealing with chronic stress for so long, then I would do either the reishi or the cordyceps mushroom stuff. So, and again, same thing here. Pick one or two of these that is going to have the best impact for you. So if you're not adapting to stress very well, you find that you're on a hair trigger. Um, you know, things seem to bother you, that anxiety, that stress or depression, um, then you would want to make sure that you picked, you know, more of the rhodiola or the ashwagandha to help you with the adaptogenic stuff. And then the Tulsi tea is relatively inexpensive. That's one that you could easily throw in along with the root liquid root extract here. Um, and then if it's more along the lines of, again, a cortisol production problem, or uh, you know that the adrenal glands are just exhausted and fatigued from chronic stress, go with the astragalus. So hopefully that helps to guide you a little bit. Um, and if you need help or guidance with that, then just, you know, make sure that you schedule a consultation in the office so that we can, we can help guide you through this. Uh, any one of our doctors is trained and uh, capable of helping you be able to uh, select the right product for your case. So, okay, step six here, uh, the lifestyle. I want to draw your attention there to the sunglasses down in the bottom. We're going to get into exactly what uh, that means. So that may seem a little odd and draw your attention right there, uh, right away. So um, there is a purpose to those sunglasses that we're going to get into, uh, something that I've been, um, you know, trying to implement into my lifestyle regularly. And I don't always remember, but we'll get into why I do that here in just a moment. But 
Step six is your lifestyle changes. What can you do day in and day out? Long-term strategy again here, practical steps to help to better manage the stress and thrive throughout your day. Uh, and this is really the um, don't lose your mind section, right? So we talked about the three things, don't get sick. So you gotta have proper inflammation, um, insulin and cortisol secretion. That all plays a role in the immune system function. So don't get sick, uh, don't gain weight. So we talked about how cortisol secretion and improper stress management can pack the pounds on one because the cortisol causes those sugar cravings and those fat cravings. And, and then this is really the focus of don't lose your mind. <laughs> you know, may, thrive through the holiday season without losing your mind. So I love to start the day in gratitude. And this is so important. I mean, I have, I can't even tell you how many patients come into the office and say, Dr. Fromm, you always seem like you're in a great mood. It never seems like you have any worries or problems in the world. Things, things seem like they're always going good for you. And guys, my life's not perfect, okay? I'm just, <laughs> it's not. Nobody's is, right? But I choose to respond to life with gratitude. And I choose to look at the good things that are happening in my life instead of focusing on the things that aren't going correctly. And when you choose to do that, and yes, I do have days when I'm down still, even when I choose to do this, but you know what? This helps me manage the days um, and, and, and try and, you know, keep that positive attitude, which allows me to be a positive influence to other people. And you know what happens is that when I enter into a relationship, when I enter into a conversation, when I enter into a room with gratitude, then it magnetizes and it draws that energy into the room and it has a direct impact on other people. And so, you know, as the, as the water levels rise, all other boats rise. So it calls you into a higher state of being you know, when you're being grat gratuitous, when you're being in gratitude, then it allows you to impact others in that same regard. And so how do I do that? Um, I do that with what's like what's called the spiritual triathlon. And uh, it's it's 15 minute exercise that I try and do every single morning. I don't always get to it, right? Again, I'm not perfect, but I try and get to this because I know that my day will go better if I just dedicate 15 minutes to myself to feeding and investing into myself in the morning. So what does that look like? Well, the first five minutes I just spend in prayer or meditation and I just thank and praise God for the amazing blessings in my life, for my family, um, for, um, you know, uh, all the, the blessings that he's provided us with. And I just think about things specifically that he's provided for us in our life and, uh, you know, and I, and I just spend that five minutes just thanking and praising the Lord for uh, an amazing life and, you know, for ability for me to continue to go out and choose to create an amazing, prosperous life for myself and my family. And I just pray and meditate on that. Um, and then the second five minutes uh, of the spiritual triathlon, I spend in a specific reading or a specific scriptural verse. And, you um, you know, and I just uh, focus on that and 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 try and um, you know uh, memorize it, and try and um, have that you know ready to go for the day, so that I can reference it when when challenges come up. Then I'm feeding truth into my heart and uh, not letting the circumstances of the environment disrupt uh, my world. So um, you know, and then the last five minutes. Um, I spend uh, doing some general stretches, so like some some yoga and yoga in the sense of stretching, not um, necessarily the uh, spiritual connotations of it, although you know th th there could be some value in that for people. Um, but for me, it's more of limbering up the body, just getting my body in line with my mind for the day. And so I don't want my body telling me, "Oh, I'm stiff. Oh, I'm achy. Oh, I'm." I'm hurting or I'm in pain because that's going to have a direct impact on my mind and my thoughts, right? So I want to work out the kinks, get stretching, get loosened up, and uh, and then stay maintain a state of gratitude so that I can approach the day with that. The last thing that I want to do is turn on the media, turn on the TV or the news or the radio or read the newspaper. That's the last thing that I want to do because you're programming your body and your brain is being programmed by something. Are you programming it? Are you in control of that and staying in a state of gratitude? Uh, or are you letting the media and the world program you as to what you should be tackling the day with? And <laughs> if you look at what's going on in the media and the news today, um, no wonder that's causing more stress and anxiety, right? So um, ignore that stuff. There's nothing you can do about it today anyways, especially for this you know, first 15, 20 minutes of your day. 
don't allow that to be the first thing that feeds your mind. Okay, tackle it later in the day if that's something that you have to do or feel that's a must in your life. Just don't allow it within the first few hours of your day. A healing bath. Um, healing bath is, um, you know, it's super simple. Warm bath of water with Epsom salts and, again, your favorite essential oil um, for relaxation. Put on some relaxing music. So whatever uh, relaxes you, some some jazz, some Mozart, you know, some whatever it is, you know, whatever relaxes you and allows your body to get into that deep state of thought and meditation and relaxation. And that's extremely helpful and beneficial for uh, allowing the adrenal glands to recover or allowing them to function properly. Uh, so healing bath is an, a gr another great tool. And then sleep, you have to be sleeping correctly. Um, you know, melatonin levels are, again, um, indirectly correlated to cortisol production. So if your melatonin is, is uh, low, it's going to jack your cortisol up way too high. And so uh, how do we have proper uh, regulation of, of melatonin? Sleep. You got to be sleeping correctly. At least seven to eight hours of good quality sleep a night. So, a couple great sleep tips. Make sure the room is cave like dark. You want to black it out. Make sure there's no light from a cell phone or alarm clock or anything. Put a blanket or a towel or something over the clock so that the light's not shining into the room. Make sure there's no sl uh, slits of light, you know, light coming through the slits of the blinds. Cave like darkness there for your sleep. Uh, make sure you're getting great quality rest for your sleep. Uh, earthing, um, Google this. It's something called earthing or grounding. Um, it's, it's it's amazingly simple. It's just walking bare, barefoot through the glass, through the grass, or on the beach. Um, and by having that barefoot, it actually releases uh, extra electrons off your body. And so the science of the research is, has shown that this is extremely stress reducing. And think about it, when you go on a, a, a vacation or a trip, right, and you're going for walks down the beach with your spouse or the kids and you're barefoot and you just feel so relaxed at the end of the day. And a lot of it has to do with this earthing and this grounding principle and just being away from all the stresses um, of your normal life. And so uh, look that one up. You know, that's something that's super simple. You can even buy like earthing or grounding mats so that during the winter, I know it's challenging to walk around barefoot in the grass in Wisconsin, right? So you can buy an earthing or a grounding mat that you can do that with and, and release those electro, uh, extra electrons and, and uh, help to gain some stress relief that way as well. Okay, so now the, the awkward sunglasses picture in the bottom of the screen. This has to do with the next one, removing blue light. Extremely important. So as the sun goes down, and again, this directly plays into those melatonin levels. So as the sun goes down at the end of the day, that's supposed to trigger the body's proper melatonin response. And so then your body's, it's triggering the response to say, okay, I'm going to start going into rest and sleep mode. And so it triggers that hormonal response that starts to relax your body so that you can get proper sleep and rest. So if you're on computers, if you're on the TV, you know, and watching TV, um, if you're, uh, you know, on your cell phone or your iPad or whatever devices, these devices emit blue light. And this blue light triggers an improper melatonin response that literally just doesn't allow your body to fully go into rest mode. And so you never fully sleep well. And this can be a very simple thing to implement. It's not that you can't do any work after dark or that you can't be on your computer or TV or anything like that. The reason those shades are there is because they are blue light blocking lenses. That's what those sunglasses are for. So I've been trying to get into the habit of when the sun goes down, if I'm going to have to do any work on a, on a computer, if we want to watch, um, you know, something on the TV or a movie, uh, to put these glasses on while I'm doing that activity. So it blocks the blue light, still allows my body to have the proper hormonal and melatonin response so that I still get great sleep. And guys, this is an amazingly simple step that works great. And these aren't like super special glasses. I mean, just look for blue light blocking glasses on Google or Amazon. I think I bought these on Amazon for like 30 bucks, right? So you can pick something up like that. There's also a setting on your devices, um, especially like cell phones and iPads where you can actually go into the display settings and you can uh, program it to after a certain time in the day that it doesn't emit blue light anymore. Um, so that's another way to remove the blue light. But um, of course, you know, that doesn't help you for your TV and there's typically not a setting for that on the TV. So I would recommend picking up some of these glasses. And then finally, 
another lifestyle change to help you manage cortisol levels and the stress is to make sure that we're checking your spine and getting it properly adjusted. Um, I can't speak enough into this. But your, your nervous system literally controls every organ, cell, and tissue in your entire body. And the brain is responsible for that. And what the research shows, all the latest research shows that in order to have a healthy brain, you have to have proper mobility and function in the joints of the spine. You have to have a healthy spine. And so would you rather have a back pain problem or a brain problem? right? And unfortunately, um, typically when you have a back pain problem that's caused by misalignment of a spinal joint, it's also a brain problem. And that's what the research is showing. So you'd rather have neither. That's the answer. You'd rather have neither, but you definitely don't want a brain problem, right? And just look what we're seeing in the world right now. I mean, practically no one, I mean, research shows less than 5% of people actually properly take care of their spine, right? So how many of you take care of your teeth? Do you brush and floss your teeth every day and take care of your teeth? Yeah, because somebody taught you how to do that and that that was an important thing for you when you were young in your life. Well, why did they teach you that? Because they didn't want you to get cavities and they didn't want you to have bad breath and they didn't want your teeth rotting out of your head or turning yellow, you know, maybe some aesthetic reasons as well. But anyways, that became a, a valuable thing for you and something you do every single day, hopefully, to help manage your teeth and make sure they're going to stay healthy and strong. Well, nobody's taught you how to quote unquote brush and floss your spine. And it's even that much more important than your teeth because it houses the nervous system and it's what manages and protects the health of your brain. The brain has to communicate with the organs. The organs have to communicate with the brain. They do that through the nervous system, which is housed and protected by the spine. So when your spine is structurally out of alignment, it interferes with proper nerve system function. It interferes with proper brain function. When you have subluxation, that's what a misalignment in the spine, that's what that's called. When you have subluxation, that is a brain problem as much as it is a spine problem. In fact, I would, I would say even more so based on what the research is showing. So none of us want a brain problem. You don't want a brain problem for yourself. You don't want a brain problem for your kids. Look at what's happening in society now. What's happening with the levels of dementia in our society right now? What's happening with the, the levels of, of Alzheimer's? What's happening with the levels of brain fog and fatigue? And These are all things that can be helped by proper mobility of the spine through chiropractic care and through adjustments. And so... That's a, that's a message the entire world needs to hear as, as far as I'm concerned. And so um, make sure that you're sharing that with people and that they understand that. Keep up with your adjustment schedule. Keep up with your home rehab protocols. And if you're not a patient already, let's make sure that we get that checked. Um, the problem is, is that how do you know if you actually have a spine problem? Well, the only way to know is for us to actually take a look at your spine with some x-rays. We have to see it. Um, you know, we have to see it. We have to see it in a picture, right? Because 90% of subluxations in the spine are asymptomatic, meaning you don't feel it. And so it, you can see there on the right hand image that when this spine is misaligned, so um, if you've ever seen a normal healthy spine, it's supposed to have a curvature in it. And you can see that the x-ray of that spine on the left hand side of your screen, it's, it's too straight. In fact, it's, it's curving in the wrong direction. And when that happens, you look at the image on the right, and you could see the spinal cord coming up from the bottom, right? And that white matter in between the dark, uh, the dark area there. And you could see the arrows pointing to where the spinal cord is literally getting crushed off. And it's getting choked off. And now the power in the brain cannot flow back and forth through the organs to the brain. So you, there's no way that your brain and your organ systems can be healthy with that level of choking in the nervous system. And so that's what we restore with proper chiropractic care. We get the spine back into its proper position. It removes that interference on the nervous system. Now the brain and the organs can communicate properly again, and the body can heal. This is your healing system. You have a healing problem. You have a brain problem. You have a spine problem if you have subluxation. And so that's what we restore. We don't cure anything. We just restore proper healing back into the body. We let the body cure itself. So whether you have back pain, neck pain, headaches, cancer, diabetes, obesity. It doesn't matter to me what the symptoms are that you come into as much as it matters to me as to what's causing them. Is it a brain problem, a healing problem, a spinal problem that's keeping your body from functioning the way that it's originally designed and intended to? The way that we check that is we check the spine for proper uh, alignment. And if it's not uh, proper alignment, then you have nerve system interference. Your brain is not working correctly. That can be caused by all kinds of traumas in life, accidents, poor posture, um, birth 
trauma. So look at the picture over there on the right hand side. That's a delivery. What's happening to that poor baby's neck right now as it's being delivered, right? And that's unfortunate because you know you you hold an infant and you you protect their spine and their neck, especially when you hold them, you hold their head, you cradle that little baby's head because they don't even have the musculature to hold up their own neck and their own head uh, properly. And so what's happening when we're pulling and twisting and tugging like that, that's going to cause misalignments. 90% Harvard research shows 90% of subluxation uh, occurs during, you know, uh, 90% of birth trauma or birth uh, uh, during the delivery process, 90% of infants end up with subluxation as a result of that. Okay, of course, falls and injuries. Think about the walking process for toddlers, right? How many times do they fall? And then in adult falls, it's even more traumatic. You know, at least those little kids, their spines can kind of bounce back from that, but they're still taking a dozen falls a day. That needs to be evaluated. We need to make sure that we're not developing a nervous system injury or a brain problem as a result of that. And of course, look at what's happening in children. All these different dysfunctional brain issues now. We got ADHD, we got uh, asthma, we got allergies, we got. Um, you know, autism, all these different things, their body's not functioning and healing correctly. Sports injuries, football, soccer, gymnastics. I mean, you think about all these different um, injuries and traumas and things that can occur during sports. I'm not opposed to sports. Let's just make sure we're brushing and flossing the spine properly and managing that so that we're not developing a long-term traumatic nerve system issue or a brain issue. Um, repetitive motion injuries. And of course, our big one that we're talking about today, stress. Okay, and stress can definitely affect the joints. You saw that in one of the first diagrams. How many different parts of the body that stress affects, including the nervous system? Um, and again, um, that's something that has to be addressed. So here's what a normal, healthy spine and nerve system should look like. Again, when your spine's misaligned, 90% asymptomatic, you don't feel it. That's exactly what was going on in Mary's case here. You can see how her curve in her neck is absolutely reversed. It's going the wrong way. That is crushing her spinal cord and her nervous system. That's causing a brain dysfunction. The brain can't communicate with the body, um, which leads to improper organ system function, sickness and disease, and all kinds of symptoms. And those are all warning signs that your body's not healing correctly. You have a brain problem. The brain's not working. It's not allowed to work the way that it should. So here's Mary's before and after. You know, we implemented our five essential system for her, gave her the proper mindset, the proper healthcare delivery system. We showed her the way. That's what essential one is there at the top. We took care of her nervous system. We removed the interference and restored the proper curvature and the proper alignment back to her spine thus allowing her brain to function properly in healing the body again. Then we, we gave her, guided her in proper nutrition and exercise, and we rem removed the toxins from her lifestyle and the toxins from her cellular environment so that her body could heal fully again. Not only did she lose 60 pounds, guys, she reversed her diabetes. She was able to come off her diabetes meds. Her blood pressure and her cholesterol uh, came back into normal regulation again. And look who's less stressed, right? See those major bags under her eyes um, in that first before picture? And now she's looking great. She's thinner. Her energy levels are back. She's back to life again in this after picture. So you want results like Mary? Let's make sure that we help you do that. You can get scheduled for an appointment. Um, click that red oval. If you go to maxhealthradio.com, that's the easiest way to get there. So write that down, just like the radio show, maxhealthradio.com. Um, go to that website. You could click on that red button that says make an appointment online, and that's going to bring you to our appointment scheduler where you can book um, at any one of our three office locations. You'll see there in the logo at the top, um, Brookfield, Hales Corners, and Waukesha. Um, so any one of those three office locations, you're going to book our new patient special, which actually currently right now for the month of November, instead of being that $97 price that you see, it's actually just $77 to book your new patient special right now. Uh, and you can do that at any one of our three office locations. It'll allow you to select your time and your date. And you can uh, submit that, and it'll give us a notice, and we'll be able to call and confirm you and make sure that you have everything you need, office location, directions, and all that to make sure that we start getting you evaluated. So new patient special includes your first three visits in the office, so your uh, initial exam, consultation, and any x-rays that we would need to take to actually see your spine, see if there's any structural issues there, and where the nerve system interference is and, and what's happening with the health of the brain. And as a result of that, we're going to administer a first treatment. So that's your second visit. We're going to see how your body responds to that. And based on that feedback, we're going to put together 
the protocol and strategy for your case to help you get well. And we'll implement that five essential system that we talked about.